the beginning of the final journey, the coffin of the late Queen carried by the groundskeepers of her Balmoral estate, a place she loved, the place she died. Initially through the streets she knew well, past the stores and houses of the nearby village and out onto the main roads and the cities beyond. It's just very, very sad. But I'm happy I was here to say our goodbyes. It, it was an absolute pleasure to serve Her Majesty. Uh, you know, she was our boss. Um, and we hold a lot of pride in that. First to Aberdeen in the northeast of Scotland, where local officials paid their respects. Farmers and horse riders formed their own special guard of honour. Then on slowly to Dundee and Perth, heading for Scotland's capital. It's part of history. It's the fact that she has dedicated her whole life to serving us as a nation. And I just felt there was nowhere else I wanted to be than to be here uh, to pay my last respects. As the coffin continued its sad, slow procession, a reminder the country is moving on. God save the King! The proclamation of the new King met by some disapproval in Edinburgh. A reminder that while the Crown passes automatically from the Queen to her eldest son, the affection the country held for her does not. The cortege passed famous landmarks before arriving in Edinburgh. Crowds who'd gathered since just after dawn to mark the arrival at Holyrood Palace, the monarch's official residence in Scotland. The Queen came home. The journey from Balmoral took six and a half hours, much longer than normal. But this was an opportunity for the people of Scotland to share a collective moment of grief, of celebration and of history. Her body will lie here in the throne room before being moved for a special service of thanksgiving at St Giles Cathedral, the mourners led by her son, King Charles III, and then the public will be given their chance to say their farewells to a figure largely loved, widely respected, and now sadly missed by the people of Scotland. Alan Fisher, Al Jazeera, Holyrood Palace, Edinburgh.